world headquarters of Fox News, it's The Kelly File with Megan Kelly. Well, so far, we have only seen the trailer, but there's already outrage from some corners over a new MTV documentary that the network says takes a look at white people and their struggles of living with white privilege. Here's a peek. So we're doing a film for MTV on what it means to be young and white. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you say the wrong thing, then suddenly you are a racist. I'm trying to be careful here. I don't want to offend people. I feel like you guys are attacking me now. If I bring up any sort of race issue with my parents, they immediately assume that I'm demonizing them. Give me a hug, give me a hug, give me a hug. How might your life be different if you weren't white? When you say white, what does that mean to you? We've never had to internalize what white people have done in America, but here, you can't escape that. It feels like I'm being discriminated against. You kind of get this feeling that things belong to you. I'm getting uncomfortable, it's, it's uncomfortable. Hey, this is great, let's get all uncomfortable together. Joining me now, National Review Editor Rich Lowry and Progressive Radio Talk Show host Leslie Marshall. Rich, let me start with you. How might your life be different if you weren't white? Well, no one has seen this program yet, Megan, but I think we're pretty safe in assuming that it will be as stupid and exploitative <laughs> as you'd expect from a network that gave us Jersey Shore and Teen Mom 2. You know, oh, the, don't, don't be misled. They genuinely <laughs> care about American society and its improvement. I know. I'm, I'm so <laughs> cynical and hard-bitten. Look, the notion of white privilege, it's very trendy, especially on college campuses, and it's based really on an odious lie about our society. There's no doubt that we have a hideous history of racism in, the, in this country, but that doesn't determine anyone's future right now. That is still overwhelmingly based on family privilege, on education, privilege, on hard work privilege, and those are things that are open to everyone in Leslie, this country. Leslie, the, the guy, that the, the producer of it, the guy behind the project is Jose Antonio Vargas, who's uh, an illegal immigrant, uh, a Pulitzer Prize winning Ill, uh, illegal immigrant who's, who's highlighting comments like the ones you just heard, like the white woman saying, this is what it's like to be white. You get this feeling that things belong to you. <laughs> Who, who died and made her the spokesperson for white people? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she certainly doesn't speak for me and I am white uh, as you noticed and uh, I think this is different than that 16 and pregnant and I agree with you rich on the stupidity of those kinds of shows you know Megan one of my favorite classes in college was called the sociology of prejudice and our teacher broke us down into groups where we had different races cultures religions and gender and we sat and had a discussion that was very uncomfortable at the beginning of class people walked out it really reminded me of this in this trailer by the end of the class, and I have friendships with many people from that today, I learned so much more about other religions and other colors and how I as a white woman are perceived and as a woman. And I thought it was great because it was a conversation that needed to be had then. Mm -hmm. It's still a conversation we need to have. And but I think among this here, group of people, but here's my question it's a for you. Here's idea. my question for you, Rich. Are we adult enough in this society to have that conversation? And do we trust that conversation to in the hands of this particular filmmaker who has come out and talked about um, we can't talk about racism until we face white privilege in this country and about how uh, a, a new America is being created right now and, and talking about the growing you know, presence of non-white people as a good thing and so on, and that's fine, but is this the shepherd we want? No, plus we're having this conversation all the time. It's one of the main topics in our country. And I think we're overly obsessed with race, especially the left, which appears to, when they look at people, they don't see individuals, they see s skin color. And that's really pernicious. And the idea of white privilege, you know, you look at some of the uh, whitest counties in America. They are in Appalachia. And if race were determined, uh, determinative of success in this country, those would be the best counties to live of and, and live in, in this entire country. And of course, they're some of the, pure, the poorest counties in this country. Mm -hmm. You look at the top colleges in America, they almost all 
discriminate in some form or other against Asian applicants because they are su such successful well, we, students. So is there Asian privilege in this country as well? Well, let me ask you about this, Leslie, because we're seeing this more and more. I and mean, I'll tell you just here in New York City, where you've got these fancy private schools, right, that people send their kids to. You, you cannot walk mm -hmm. through the halls of one of these schools without seeing these posters about got privilege, check it. And then your kids get an education on how bad America is because of what the white people did to the American Indians, and they devote entire years of school teaching the kids about that fact. And so, I mean, so the people think that it is white shaming as opposed to just getting a dialogue started on, on race issues. I understand that because I think a lot of people uh, perceive uh, that if you're proud of being Caucasian that it is racist or that you're a neo-Nazi or a skinhead. Um, I, th <laughs> I think it's essential for people to have accurate history about our history and that does include color. And with this group of people, especially on this, th this trailer that we've seen, they're going to be in the prime of their lives when 2054 rolls around and whites are no longer the majority. So mm -hmm. I think it's fair to say, what would life be like if you weren't white? And I think it's also fair to say to people who are people of color, what do you feel it would be? And Rich, although the Appalachian is a great example, when you go to some of these really hoity-toity schools, you don't see a lot of color in the hallways, and I think that's going that's to change. That's not true in New York City. That is not true here. Well, you know, the, <laughs> these, um, but these I can kids, tell you, listen, I can tell you, that, how might your life be different if you were not white? The, these kids I would on, be darker. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I got to go. All right. <laughs> see you. <laughs> Have a good night.